Coming up today on the Leipzig Loco, we have a transfer special as we head into our first season up in the two Bundesliga and we have a wage budget left over of around about £20,000. Can we improve this team enough to hopefully avoid a relegation battle? and welcome to episode 29 of the Leipzig Loco with Lokomotiv Leipzig here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up today as a transfer special heading into the fourth season of the Save in the First One up in the two Bundesliga. So if you are looking forward to seeing what transfer business we do get done to try and make sure that this club does not go straight back down to the free league, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but it is a transfer special day off the back of the end of the free league season in yesterday's episode if you missed that one i'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner obvious spoilers we did end up getting automatically promoted through a second place finish with two wins from those last two games with heidenheim slipping up enough so we could jump above them. On the table, as you can see, Eintracht Braunschweig did end up being the champions, and Ingolstadt also got promoted after winning a promotion playoff. There was the review of the free league season. We also did have someone in the hunt for the signing of the season. In fact, two of them, Matthias Hasman as well as Tim Lehmann. But we have just ticked over into the two Bundesliga seasons. We have gone on a little bit off the back of that end of season review towards the end of the yesterday's episode and the reason for that was so I didn't sign any new players too early in the star rating did drop going up a division from where we previously were so we have just got our fixture list in for the two Bundesliga this season our competition expectations are pretty basic just attempt to avoid relegations not even having to actually avoid relegation as long as we make it a close run thing we should still be in a job here at Lokomotiv Leipzig and also in the cup the DFB Pockel just aim to be competitive in that competition so really not many expectations for us in this upcoming season but hopefully we can continue to outperform like we have in the first three seasons of the save and hopefully stay up in the two Bundesliga and that should help out the club financially still in a little bit of trouble in that regard a quick look at the finances just over £500,000 in the red albeit we have had a significant bump in our wage budget as you can tell currently only spending 25,000 on wages. Now we have a budget of 47, just shy of 48,000 pounds to work with, albeit haven't quite ticked over into the new season yet, where some player contracts will get renewed. So we'll see how much is left over once we do tick over into the official start of the season for player contracts, which I believe will be the start of July. Also, 5,000 pounds transfer budget, but to be fair, most of that will just be going on some signing on bonuses, I dare say, to try and get some players over the line here and into the club at Lokomotiv Leipzig. But with the squad that we currently have here, which was the one that did get us promoted up to the two Bundesliga, a quick look here at the season preview off the back of us getting our fixtures for this season. And straight away, we are the rank outsiders to be winning the league and heavy, heavy favourites to be going straight back down. So obviously that suggests we do need to do a fair bit of work on the squad, albeit the teams that we were in and around in the promotion hunt from last season who did come up alongside us in Eintracht, Braunschweig and Ingolstadt. They are up in 14th and 15th, so I do feel like you could argue we should be in and around there, potentially in between those two teams. But still, definitely it would be useful for us here to add some more quality to this Lokomotiv Leipzig team. So now we have gone up to the two Bundesliga and some of the evaluations of players might be a little bit more accurate for the division we are going to find ourselves in. It is time for us now to start doing some transfer business in terms of players who are going to be leaving us going in to this upcoming season. A quick look at the squad and switching this over to reports. You can see the star ratings and potential of all these players. Just one change from our first choice 11 going in to this new season will be Daniel Hindu will fill in for Mike Iwazita as the starting centre-back because he is opting not to renew his contract. He wants to move on to a bigger club. So that's one player we do need to replace, albeit with players like a Hindu as well as Lino Labonte. And also, we do have Killian Zaruba coming back from loan as well, albeit 
slight issue with that one, but we do have a few options there to replace him. But we'll see if we need to add some extra quality in that position for a new starting center back to replace the outgoing Mike Eagleseta. That will free up just shy of £1,000 a week. The other player who is definitely going is Kevin Zizzi. Here he is a transfer arranged to go to Olympia Ljubljana back in his homeland of Slovenia. He did not want to renew his contract here. So even if we did want to, and to be fair, his wage, not too bad for a player of his quality at £725 a week. But his record here was pretty average once he did get up to the freelier. Of course, last season he was out for most of the first half with a broken ankle. And the second part of the season did only score one goal in 15 appearances, even though most of those did come off the bench. So Kevin Zizek will also be leaving us. That bumps up our extra wage now to around about £1,600 that will be freed up with those players leaving. Also, we might look at getting rid of Zark Paulo Piplica as a player with some decent potential at four stars, but at 23 years old with two-star current ability, I am leaning towards letting him go unless something does happen before we do get into the date when those player contracts do expire, but Zach Paulo Piplica might be another player who does leave us, not necessarily because he's a bad player, but mostly because he wants a big wage increase from £325 a week up to around about 1500 and don't feel like that's quite justified. We might see if we can get that down a little bit more going into the end of the season, and if Paulo Piplica does stay as he could be a useful player potentially with that four-star potential and might even help us finally boost up our numbers in our second team, which so far hasn't really done a lot because we haven't really had the finances to get that team going here so far. At Lokomotiv Leipzig, so they're the three players who could be leaving us going into this new season in the two Bundesliga as well, of course, as the players who were on loan last season from Eintracht Frankfurt. But some early bad news here in the new season at Lokomotiv Leipzig because preseason has got underway already. We have picked up some pretty interesting injuries and they all seem to come in the centre-back area. So maybe. That's why, despite the fact we have some extra depth, even with Mike Eelzeta leaving, we might need to make a new signing in that area. The big one, Killian Zaruba. This one actually happened very late last season down in the regional league. I was actually surprised those guys were still playing. But damaged cruciate ligaments there for Killian Zaruba. That means he will be out for five to eight months. So unfortunately, off the back of that loan at Lubeck, it does look like he won't be featuring too much for us in this upcoming season at Lokomotiv Leipzig, which is a bit of a shame because he did look to be improving just a little bit down in the regional Liga, albeit would have been a decent step up for him, but still could have filled in that hole left by Eagles Zeta, but now won't be available for the first part of the season. Also a little bit less seriously, Lucas searches out with a double hernia for around about a month, so might be missing for maybe the first game or two of the new season, and also Mark Lamptey out for a similar time period with some sprained ankle ligaments, so it does mean in the preseason we are quite light at centre-back. I think it's just these days the likes of a Hindu as well as Labonte, who can play in that position, and apart from that we might need to call up some people from down in the under-19s to make sure those players don't get too tired when we do try and get the full squad ready to go for the start of the season and some friendlies, but that is the situation going into the start of the new season as we are about to finally get onto some signings now. We have just gone over into the two Bundesliga season. A quick look at our fixtures early doors. Very interesting first fixture for us, and hopefully one we can pick up a win in. We take on the team who were champions from the free league last season in Eintracht Braunschweig, and off the back of that, Holstein Kiel away before the DFB Pockel first round, and another interesting game in that first month a team who just got promoted above us two seasons ago from the Free Liga in Erzgebirge and from there, we do start to take on some teams a bit more well-known as two Bundesliga and Bundesliga teams at times, the likes of Werder Bremen, 1860 Munich and Paderborn. So it could get a bit tougher off the back of those first couple of games. So hopefully we can get off to a good start and maybe maintain that form from up there, but hopefully in that first game anyway, we can pick up some points and take things from there. But those are our first couple of games anyway in our first season up in the two Bundesliga. But we'll come back shortly as we do some transfers and try and improve the squads. We're not heavy, heavy favourites to go straight back down. And going forward to the start of July, and we have got our first couple of players coming in the door here 
At Lokomotiv Leipzig, these are players for the most part who we did sign late last season, like the likes of Hindu as well as Lehman and Bulland coming into the club last season. These are similar type of signings, albeit not quite the same star potential as those guys did have as well. Is a first choice player in the goalkeeper area, of course, to replace the likes of Issa Dogen also leaving the club as well as Tobias John Brewer. Those guys were out on loan last season, so didn't actually remember them before, but those are also players who are now off of our books now we have ticked over into the new season, but these are the three youngsters who we have signed come the start of the transfer window. First up, Emiliano Sifuentes, an attacking midfielder who will probably train as a centre mid on attack. Only one and a half star current ability, so definitely will start off life in the under-19s, but the former Wolfsburg man does have that five-star potential, even if only four of those stars are gold and is on a nice cheap contract of £375 a week. So he joins us as well as Aaron Olofs. He is on £350 a week, two-star current ability, four-star potential, is a striker come right winger, also formerly of Wolfsburg, 17 years old, another player who with him staying life down in the under-19s might take a little bit of time for him to start to feature in the first team here at Lokomotiv Leipzig and the other youngster that we have signed is Kevin Eismenger. He is a left-back who does come to us from Union Berlin, one and a half star current ability, four and a half stars potential. Again, will probably start off life down in the under-19s with that current ability, but could end up being quite a good left-back for us in the future if he does develop like we are hoping he will, but to replace Issa Dogen and just give us a little bit more depth in that goalkeeping area, we have signed a new first choice goalkeeper, which wasn't actually the plan, but this guy did look pretty good value for the wage that he is on. He is Lithuanian in Titus Krapikas, four star current ability, four and a half star potential, already a decent two Bundesliga player, and hopefully the type of player who might save us some points in this upcoming season, he's actually spent quite a bit of time in Italy over the last few years at teams like Sampdoria, Spezia, and Frosinone, but does look like a quite good goalkeeper and really, really like his height and his aerial reach, 1.94 metres tall, 15 aerial reach, and 19 jumping reach. Should be no issues from corners coming into the box or balls coming into the box with him being that tall and that dominant in the air, so hopefully... That might help us out a decent player who's a bit of an upgrade on Matas Hasman. He is on a wage of just under £4,000 a week, 3 9 so it is a decent wage. But thankfully, with that wage budget that we did have going to this new season, did feel like that was an area we could improve in, albeit off the back of that, not as much wage budget as you might expect because with those player contracts now having been renewed for the players who are staying there, now we are down to 5.72k left per week, albeit we can shift a bit of that over from both the scouting budget, because there's 30k left in that, and also the transfer budget, where there's 36,000 left. So I imagine that will go up by another few thousand once we do that. We've made a few signings to start things off here for the new season. At Lokomotiv Leipzig, a few youngsters as well as a new first choice goalkeeper also. But we'd come back as well, because there's comment here about the departure of Kevin Zizek is quite hilarious. Not sure why such a good player was sold, but the fans won't miss him nearly as much as the chances he missed to be fair. That's a pretty accurate statement, but those are our first four signings going into the two Bundesliga here at Lokomotiv Leipzig. And going forward just over a week from those first couple of transfers that did come in at the start of the window, and we have got a new backup striker in behind Jamal Ziani. Obviously with the departure of Kevin Zizek, that was an area where we could have been quite weak in depth, we have found someone eventually who does join us here, and that is Danny Lewell, two and a half stars current ability, four and a half star potential, the potential to be a good two Bundesliga player, even though probably not quite up to this level just yet. But he is South Sudanese these days now that we are in the two Bundesliga, no limits on the amount of foreign players that we can have in this division. So it does mean squad registration does get a little bit easier for us, apart from the fact we do need a couple of homegrown club nation players as well as about 12 German players. But because we've come up from the regional Liga and the free Liga, that is no issue at all. But he is our new backup striker, 17 caps for the national team and two goals. Looks like a decent player with a fair bit of potential. Recently has scored a few goals for Victoria Pilsen, albeit mostly for the B team. 
Hopefully, we'll do a decent job for us here as the backup to Jamal Ziani and might overtake him in a season or so's time in that striker role in place of Kevin Zizek. And we've gone for today for another signing here at Lokomotiv Leipzig. First off, I did forget the wage there for Danny Lewell. He will cost us £2,000 a week. As a squad player, but going up, we have a new midfielder here who is quite young and very promising. I did finally get around to scouting some free agents on some international youth teams. And we did find, among others here, young Daniel Kouetu. He is going to be signed for us on a free transfer for £1,700 a week. And as you can see, quite a promising player at only 19 years old, three and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential. I think he'll probably end up playing as the potentially new starring Mazala over someone like Julian Weigel with that better current ability in terms of star ratings, as well as his attributes, and also quite high potential. The Italian, formerly of Inter Milan, should be able to do a good job for us here in the second division. Of German football made no appearances for the senior team, so a bit hard to tell how good he is based on performance, but based on star rating and attributes, could be a good upgrade for us in that Mazala role also, just to make sure we do keep the books somewhat balanced in terms of our wage budget and to make sure some of our youngsters do develop. So hopefully they can be of use to us in the future here at Lokomotiv Leipzig. We are going to loan out Dieter Gamer, one of the players who came through one of our first youth intakes. Still has decent potential in three and a half stars, but at 19 years old, thought it was a good idea for him to go out on loan. And he will be going to Lichtenberg as a star player. And they are down in the regional league in Nordost. Of course, that was the first division we came out of in this save, but Dieter Geimer departs. But meanwhile, we have signed Daniel Cueto. And going forward nearly a week off the back of those prior signings, we've got a few more here that are starting to come. And as I said, I've started to get some players coming to the club on trial who are free agents from some international youth teams. And thankfully, have found a few little gems. And this might be the first one of those in Mohamed Ezahouni. He is a Moroccan goalkeeper. Two-star current ability, four and a half star potential. Is 19 years old, but it might mean... He could get some game time for us potentially if we do fill out that second team that we do have because the players who go down there, their wages do not come off our books. That is a very handy trick I did discover late last season with the likes of Issa Dogen and Tobias Dombrower moving down there. So we could put him down there and it won't affect our wage budget, which could be quite handy. But he's a fairly promising goalkeeper at 19 years old, has made a few appearances for the Lille second team. Hopefully will do a decent job for us and should be someone who in a few years time can make his way into the first team and on quite a low wage as well of £375 a week. And we come back as we have signed another youngster a few days off the back of that previous one. Also a player that I did try and sign as the new first choice goalkeeper before we did get the Lithuanian. A bit of a channel favourite here in the Cal Serifalini. Of course we hit him in our Builder Nation last year at Volsung. Unfortunately turned us down because of the wage, even though he has just signed a contract with Getafe for a lower wage, so not too sure what's going on there with Mikel. Could have been a good reunion there for a player which did help us get to a Champions League final, I believe, before we did replace him with Carl Volum. But we have signed Francis Gaima, who is an attacking fullback, two stars current ability, four and a half star potential, another player on a very low wage, albeit he will probably end up down in the under 19s, if not out on loan so we can develop maybe just a little bit more before we do use him in a few years time in the first team but he is from Ghana looks quite promising has previously been at both Liverpool and Lazio so a decent get there for us and could end up being a bit of a gem on a low wage otherwise of course we can turn him around for a profit and get some more money into the club in the future but hopefully Francis Gaima might be a decent player for us in a few years time another youngster here at Lokomotiv Leipzig. And yet another new signing here at Lokomotiv Leipzig as we do into the final week prior to the start of the new season. So there's going to be quite a bit of late activity potentially happening here at the club before we do enter our first season. In the two Bundesliga, this is a defensive midfielder who, to be fair, we might play a bit further forward, but pretty similar to the previous one in Cueto. He is a good youngster who should be able to make his way straight into the first team over someone like Ricardo Grimm, this is Matteo Cicella. Three and a half stars current ability, 
five star potential, even though four of those are gold. Potentially two Bundesliga standard is on a decent wage of 1.8 thousand a week. But with that current ability as well as that potential at that age, I did feel like it was a risk worth taking. Also, as an Italian, formerly of Roma instead of Inter Milan, I think he looks a bit better suited to a centre mid on attack. We could play him alongside Quieto and a bit of a new look midfield instead of Ricardo Grimm and Julian Weigel. And hopefully that might give us a bit more in that midfield in this upcoming season. But he could be another good get for us at a young age. Matteo Cicella, formerly of Roma. And we are only three days prior to the first game of the season for us in the two Bundesliga against Eintracht Braunschweig. I think we're only one day in fact away from the start of the actual season. And we have signed a centre-back just thought we could potentially use a little bit more depth in that area with those injuries, in particular that one to Zaruba, which will keep him out for the first half of it this season. We have signed Alexander Stankovic, young promising 19-year-old, two and a half star current ability, five star potential, is on just under £1,000 a week. But did feel like with those injuries we do have in that area of the pitch, might not be the worst idea to pay a little bit more than we have for some of the other youngsters who are similar in terms of the current ability to get him here to Lokomotiv Leipzig. He is Serbian previously from Inter Milan as well. So you can see we have picked up a few players formerly who spent some time in Italy, but he can also fill the defensive midfield role as a tall guy, 1.91 meters tall, and is already fairly decent in the air compared to the players we already have at the club potentially two Bundesliga standard. So Alexander Stankovic will come in and does already look a little bit better than someone like Daniel Hindu. So might even make his way into that starting spot for this new season to replace the departed Mike Eagleseter. And also a bit of personal news, we have signed a new contract here at Lokomotiv Leipzig, which will hopefully keep us around until the end of 2028. Let's just hope we don't get sacked before then. In a day prior to our opening game of the season, we have made one more young signing here at Lokomotiv Leipzig, hoping with all these young signings, it will either generate some future transfer funds here at the club or really future-proofs us for a couple of years' time when some players do move on once they do hit a bit of an older age. But our new signing here is Brad Sweetman. To be fair, he will probably be someone who goes straight back out on loan. But one and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential on £400 a week. We are still managing to keep everything under the wage budget. He is a Welshman previously of Nottingham Forest. We're probably going to train him up as a ball-winning midfielder for the future. But another new signing here, Brad Sweetman from Nottingham Forest. And just one hour before our first game of the new two Bundesliga season, we have made a few more signings of youngsters here at Lokomotiv Leipzig, probably our last two as well, considering how close we are to that first game, which will come up. In tomorrow's episode, first off, a player who won't join us just yet. He won't join us until he turns 18. But Uga Balakta is a Turkish defensive midfielder, 350 pounds a week, two-star current ability, four and a half star potential, can also play center back and a bit further forward. So it could be quite a versatile player with decent potential. He will join us from Fenerbahce on a free, hopefully could be someone yet again. We can either spin for a profit or who can feature for the first team in a couple of years' time. And going up a little bit more, we have someone who can actually join us straight away. And Jean Castanaro, two and a half stars current ability, four and a half stars potential, only on £350 a week, formerly of Inter Milan yet again, but is from Congo and is a left back who can also play as a left winger. So now, a bit of a future plan there in that area, having also signed someone like Guima earlier in the transfer window does mean we should be sorted out for future years at left back or we can make some money off these youngsters who do join us from big clubs having not featured for them good determination so hopefully as someone who can reach that potential also speaking of Guima he will be heading out on loan to Hearts of Oak back in Ghana just to make sure that he will get some game time seeing as we don't quite have a full squad in the B team at the moment so it does mean those players down there we really only keeping players with not much potential or who are over the age of 19 and can't feature for the under-19s. We have a plan to loan those guys out, but it does mean that we'll get a bit of money off of the wage budget, and hopefully we can stay under that when we do hit the start of the season. 
and pretty much just one click on from loaning out Gaima and those two prior transfers that did go through, that will do it for us prior to the start of the new season, which we'll come back for in tomorrow's episode. But before then, we will do a run through of our first team squad these days, albeit a lot of players who are down in the B team and the under 19s who we can call upon if we do have injuries at the moment. The likes of Awusu and Kachala, our new midfielder, are out for a little bit longer, might miss the first couple of games of the season after they picked up some injuries before they got here and in the preseason. Thankfully, not quite so bad these days at centre back, albeit the likes of Lucas Search and Mark Lamptey can only handle 45 minutes. But this is where our team looks like these days here at Locomotive Leipzig, still running that tactic we did in the season with last time around. It did help us find some form late on and get promoted up to the two Bundesliga, so hopefully it will do the job for us up here. In this division, we'll also just make some changes with those injured players, so you can see what our first team would usually look like here at Lokomotiv Leipzig, and this is probably what we're going for for this upcoming season. In goal, one of our new signings in Titus Krapikas, the Lithuanian goalkeeper, should hopefully do a good job for us in between the sticks, and it does mean as a backup in that area, we have a very able one there, in Matas Hasman, who was a good signing for us when he did join prior to the start of last season, despite the fact he did make the odd mistake these days. He can be a backup to one of our new signings, our right back and left back, exactly the same with Punzel when he stood out right, and Linus Zimmer out on the left hand side. Those guys still have a bit of potential and did a decent job for us last season in terms of backups in that area. In the first team, Eric Vufak these days, the right back backup. We did re-sign Zach Polo Piplica because for a brief moment he did go up to two and a half star current ability and also we did get that contract down just a little bit and to be fair did struggle to find a backup left back who wanted a wage anywhere near that low. So Polo Piplica will be the backup left back to Linus Zimmer for the upcoming season. Going back up to the starters, Lucas Search is still there at centre back as you would expect. Three and a half star current ability and that four star potential. And as we suggested when we made the signing, it will be Stankovic who will start alongside him, being just a little bit better than the likes of a Hindu as well as Labonte and of course the injured Killian Zaruba, who for now we have put down in the B team. But down on the bench, as I said, we will have a Hindu and also lying around in our squad will be one of our other signings from last season. And Lino Labonte going forward to the midfield, Leon Heinke will still be that defensive midfielder who will hopefully be a good weapon for us from set pieces, three and a half star current ability and potential. And the back up to him will be Mark Lamptey, albeit for the early stages of the season. He might be needed to also cover that centre back role. Still a decent bit of potential, but if it drops any further, might be someone we do look at letting go of the Tunisian international going forward to the more attacking midfield. And this is where the main changes do come for this upcoming season. When they're both fit, we'll have two newcomers in those roles as a centre mid on attack. It will be Matteo Cicella, but he will be missing for the start of the season. The former Roma man who did not play for that club and alongside him, the fellow Italian in Daniel Cueto, formerly of Inter Milan. He can actually play as an Ngonche which is very attractive, but I think we'll just put him as a Mazala on support. He is a bit of an upgrade on the former man there in Julian Weigel, as is the case with Kachala coming in for Ricardo Grimm. And on the bench, obviously, the players who started there last season in Julian Weigel as the Mazala, as well as Ricardo Grimm as that backup to Kachala, albeit for the start of the season. He will probably be starting there and we'll put someone like Tim Lehman on the bench in his place. He is still in the squad, as is Luca Vayner. So we could loan out a few more players in that midfield because it is somewhere we have a lot of depth going down further. Just like last season, our wingers will be Mike Awusu these days is 30 years old. But to be fair, still quite a good player for us. And now on the left-hand side, Osman Atilgen, the former striker, still quite highly rated even though we are up in the two Bundesliga. The backups to those guys these days, it will be probably Danny Hermel, who will start over Awosu for the start of the season. But we might drop him down to the under-19s when he is not starting so we can continue to develop while someone like Taylor Biddy does sit on the bench as that backup right winger. And out on the left-hand side, we do of course have the former RB Leipzig man 
in and Tom Bulland with that good potential still at only 19 years old. And going into the striking area, Jamal Ziani, still the first choice striker for us, albeit 33 years old. We'll see how long he lasts there before hopefully Danny Lewell can overtake him as the new first choice striker here at Lokomotiv Leipzig. And hopefully we don't need to call upon anyone else down in our under 19s because otherwise might be a little bit weaker in that striking area for this upcoming season. It might be the one area we could potentially use another player to fill out this squad with a bit more quality, but hopefully we can start off the season while Antiani can pick up where he left off at the end of the last one and other players down there in our squad, as mentioned earlier, Killian Zaruba, but he will be out for most of the first part of the season. Going down a bit further to the second team, we'll sort these guys out by contract so you can see the ones who are actually going to be sticking around here at the club because at the moment still have quite a few on trial, but a few backup goalkeepers still in Nicholas Muller, Ezra Lahani, and a couple of other players who are listed alone, and Castagnaro, the new left back, as well as Finn Speckman, who can hopefully develop a little bit more out on loan and going down to the under-19s. We can sort these guys out by position. There's a few players down here with some decent current ability who we could call up if near the likes of Felt Malhorn, Lars Luka Horsch, as well as players like Aaron Olofs and Johan Kapler further forward. But that will only be the case if we do suffer some severe injuries or at least a couple of injuries in those positions. Hopefully with that depth that we do from the first team, that will not be something that we need to do in going back over to the season preview to just see if that helps us out at all in terms of where we should be finishing. Not at all exactly the same odds. And having dropped further behind someone like Eintracht Braunschweig, who these days are up in 13th and above 1860 Munich on that season preview. So unfortunately those transfers that we have done aren't helping our chances apparently in this upcoming season, but hopefully it does mean we have future proof the club up with that extra wage budget that we did make the most of going over and having a look at the finances. We are just £159 a week over, but hopefully having chucked a few players in the second team, and we might also do that as well for Killian Zaruba, it will mean that might sort that out a little bit off the back of our first game of the new season come the start of tomorrow's episode. Also, we were able to keep that wage budget under control quite considerably by moving a lot of scouting budget over into the transfer budget. We are just on the two Bundesliga package. That is all that we could afford, even when that scouting budget was £55,000. So it is only £25,000. Still have 29 in our scouting budget. We should be okay for affording scouting for this upcoming season, but I think that will do it for today's episode. Lots of transfers, especially young ones, but unfortunately, still predicted to go straight back down to the free league. Hopefully, we'll get off to a good start in tomorrow's episode and get ourselves in a bit more of a positive frame of mind going into the rest of this two Bundesliga season. If you enjoyed this transfer special, as I said, lots of new signings, albeit most of them are down in our under-19s, but a few who make their way into the first team, a couple of midfielders, a centre-back as well. As a new goalkeeper, if you enjoyed those signings and that transfer special, then do consider going down below, leaving a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. We'll come back tomorrow, and I think we'll play the first two games of the season. We might take things nice and slow come the start of this two Bundesliga season just to see how we do get on with the rise up a league. And that first game in particular will be quite a big one, taking on a team we're quite familiar with, having played them last season when they finished first and came up from the free league as champions. And Einstein Braunschweig and then will travel away to take on Holstein Kiel. We played their second team last season in the free league who got relegated down in division. No doubt these guys will be a lot tougher and will take things slow over the first couple of episodes and get stuck into life in the two Bundesliga and then see if we need to come back and take on the best teams or the ones who might be in a relegation fight with us. But hopefully with that tactic, which did work quite well for us late last season, we can stay up here in the two Bundesliga. But we'll see how things go. Come the start of the season in tomorrow's episode where we take on Eintracht Braunschweig and Holstein Kiel. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on and I'll see you then. Cheers.
Don't know 